Hello, Franklin families. It's Miss Farrar, the Library Media Specialist. And this week's Franklin Friday Read Aloud is Carter Reads the Newspaper, the story of Carter G. Woodson, founder of Black History Month. Our story is written by Deborah Hopkinson and illustrated by Don Tate. Each February, we celebrate Black History Month. It's a time to honor heroes like Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, and Martin Luther King Jr. But there's one hero we sometimes forget. Carter G. Woodson didn't help people escape from slavery, start a bus strike, or lead a movement of millions. Yet without him, we might not have Black History Month. This is his story. Carter was born in a small farm in Virginia in 1875, 10 years after the end of the Civil War. Carter's parents, James Henry and Ann Eliza, were born into slavery, and Carter grew up hearing about their lives. The stories they told weren't part of any history book, but Carter kept them in his heart. James Henry had run away from his master to join the Union Army and fight for freedom. Times were hard, though. After the war, James Henry worked on the railroad, saving enough to buy a few acres of worn-out land. Most years, the crops brought in a hundred dollars or less. Anne Eliza was unbelievably brave. When she was a girl, her master decided to sell her mother. Anne Eliza asked him to sell her instead. That way, her mother wouldn't have to leave her other five children. But no one offered enough money for Anne Eliza, so her master sold her mother and two little brothers instead. Anne Eliza didn't see them again until after the Civil War. She never forgot the horror of standing on the auction block. Carter's parents struggled to feed and clothe seven children, especially in winter and early spring. Food was scarce. Carter, the youngest one, once said, we would leave the table hungry to go to the woods and pluck the persimmons. Many times he had to jump into bed early on Saturday nights so his mother could wash his only pants and shirt for church the next day. Carter could only attend school four months each year. The rest of the time he was needed to work on the farm. Learning didn't happen just at school. James Henry taught his children to stand up for themselves and take pride in who they were. He gave Carter the courage to look anyone in the eye and declare, I am your equal. And though Carter's father couldn't read nor write, he believed in an informed, uh, I'm sorry, he believed in being an informed citizen. So he asked Carter to read the newspaper to him but newspapers weren't easy to come by. Sometimes Carter read from old ones that had been used to wrap up food or packages. Reading the newspaper gave Carter his first glimpse of the wider world. Carter longed to go to high school, but his family needed him to earn money. When he was 15, he hired himself out to nearby farms working long hours under the hot sun. He also drove a garbage wagon. High school would have to wait. Carter's older brother, Robert, found good paying work in the coal mines of West Virginia. Carter decided to join him there. Mining was grueling work for a boy not yet 17. It was dangerous. Once, a piece of slate came crashing down on Carter's head. He never forgot his time in the mines. Years later, Carter said, I am a coal miner 
and I can take anything. In this harsh place, Carter met a man named Oliver Jones. You'd have to look hard to find Oliver's name in a history book, but in that small mining camp in Fayette County, West Virginia, Oliver did something important. He changed one life, and that life changed many. Like Carter's father, Oliver was a Civil War veteran who believed in education. As a soldier who had been at the Battle of Appapattox on the final day of the Civil War, Oliver had fought for freedom and equality. He was still willing to do his part to further the cause, said Carter. Each evening after working in the mines, Oliver threw open the doors of his little house to the other miners. He made his home a reading room, filling it with books by African-American writers and with newspapers from all over the country. He sold ice cream and fruits, all at prices the men could afford. At first, Carter just went for the food, but that changed. Carter said, when Oliver Jones learned that I could read, he soon engaged me to inform him and his friends as to what was in the daily newspapers. Carter was happy to oblige. He liked reading newspapers. Besides, he said later, I always enjoyed nice things to eat. Carter admired Oliver. He was a well-educated man, but he could neither read nor write, said Carter. He learned through others. Carter began to learn in the same way. Carter had longed for school. Life at Oliver's tea room turned out to be school of a different kind. Whenever Oliver and the other miners had questions about something Carter read in the newspaper, it was Carter's job to research the answers. If a Civil War veteran was in the news, Oliver wanted to know all about the man. I had to look him up in the books, inform my friends as to what battles he had fought, said Carter. If there was a question about economics, politics, or a new law, it was up to Carter to find out all about it in the newspaper and explain it to his friends. Carter was inspired by Oliver and his circle of men committed to freedom, equality, and knowledge. Men whose own life stories would never be in history books. And so the seeds of Carter's own life work began to grow. My interest in pe penetrating the past of my people was deepened. Carter worked in the mines for three years. When he was 20, he moved home to Virginia to start high school. He finished in just two years. Carter went on to college and became a teacher. He continued to study and work earning a master's degree when he was 33. Then, when Carter was 37, he earned a PhD in history from Harvard University, the second African-American to do so. W.E.B. Du Bois was the first. Carter was the first and only Black American whose parents had been slaves to receive a doctorate in history. At Harvard, so the story goes, one of Carter's professors said that black people had no history. Carter remembered his father's pride, his mother's courage, and Oliver's determination to learn. He remembered reading the newspaper. Carter spoke up. No people lacked a history, he said. The professor challenged Carter to prove him wrong. For the rest of his life, Carter did just that. In 1926, he established Negro History Week. Later, it became Black History Month. Carter chose the second week of February to mark the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. Today, our entire nation celebrates Black History Month, and we honor Dr. Carter G. Woodson as the father of Black history. But in 1926, Carter was alone with his new idea. 
he had to blaze a trail. He had to spread the word at a time when there were no computers or internet or televisions. So Carter sent pamphlets about Negro History Week out to schools, colleges, churches, and women's clubs. And of course, he sent notices to newspapers. Here displayed are some famous African-Americans, Frederick Douglass, Abraham Lincoln, Sarah Breedlove, Rebecca Lee Crumpler, Peter Salem, George Washington Carver, Sojourner Truth, W.E. Du Bois, Louis Latimer, Mary McLeod Bethune, Ida B. Wells. The boy who began by reading the newspaper to others transformed the way people thought about history. He fought for our history based on truth, a history that includes all people. Carter G. Woodson didn't just study history, he changed it, and we can too. Thank you for listening to this week's Franklin Friday Read Aloud.